Hey, everybody. Hope this finds you doing well. This is Danelle, and today we are going to talk about the biggest news stories in the cryptocurrency and NFT space over the past week. Please continue to follow us as we will keep you updated on what is going on in one of the most fascinating emerging markets in the world. So as usual, we're going to start with the cryptocurrency charts. As you can see, Bitcoin still number one, stays number one, hasn't been moved from its spot ever. It is at $20,178. It's down just under 1% today at 0.59%. Ethereum, we're going to get to that. Big news, big, big news in Ethereum world. It's currently trading at $1,625. It is up almost 3% at 2.77% over the last 24 hours. If you haven't heard the CPI numbers, which is the consumer price index that gives the inflation numbers per month, came out earlier this week and the markets dropped, not only in equities, but also in cryptocurrency. A lot of people were spooked because of the fact that the inflation numbers were a little bit higher than expected. We are still very high in inflation at over 8 point, I believe 6% currently. So we're not seeing a slowing down as much as we would have liked as of yet. So it's likely that the Federal Reserve will continue to raise interest rates to try to inflate to fight inflation. If you want a little bit more of a breakdown, please refer to our previous video and we'll make sure to have it linked at the end of this video so you can have a chance to learn a little bit more about what's going on with inflation. Let's get on with some of the bigger news in the cryptocurrency space. Fidelity and Charles Schwab joining along with Citadel Securities is going to launch a crypto exchange. So Coinbase, you better watch your back because some of the largest investment banks in the world are going to join forces to create a exchange to sell, buy, and trade cryptocurrencies. This is huge because these banks have access to the largest and biggest institutions in the world, meaning there's lots and lots of money that could potentially be exposed to the cryptocurrency market. And that's great for cryptocurrency holders and the cryptocurrency market as a whole, because we're currently trading at around $1 trillion currently total of all cryptocurrencies. So when you look at something like Fidelity and Charles Schwab that has tens of trillions of dollars of assets under management, that means that the cryptocurrency market too could potentially have access to that type of capital. So the name of the cryptocurrency exchange is going to be called EDX Markets. And the key takeaways here from Investopedia is Fidelity and Charles Schwab and Citadel have teamed up to launch the first of its kind crypto exchange is going to be called EDX Markets. And it's also aided by ventures from other major financial capital firms and venture firms. And what they're looking to do is to provide a safer, faster, and more efficient cryptocurrency trading platform. So we'll be interested to see once that comes out. I'm not sure the exact date of when they plan on coming out. This just recently was announced. So it'll probably take a little bit of time before it actually is available to retail traders that are part of Fidelity and Charles Schwab. I'm not sure if it's also going to be open to other traders as well, but it'll be interesting to see how well that goes once it's up and running. So we're going to go to the biggest news in the cryptocurrency space right now is that we are on the verge of the Ethereum merge. So basically the biggest takeaways that you want to have from the Ethereum merge is just understanding that Ethereum, which is the second largest cryptocurrency in the world, there's a lot of platforms, a lot of applications that are built on top of Ethereum. And so in order to continue to progress and to do well in the market, it was important for Ethereum to become more scalable and to continue to be as secure as possible and try to be as sustainable as possible. So it is now going from proof of work, which is the same uh, mechanism that Bitcoin uses to validate transactions on the blockchain. It is now moving from proof of work to proof of stake. So instead of using mining, which can be very energy intensive because it takes a lot of computing power to um, secure and validate transactions on the blockchain, they will be now moving to proof of stake, meaning that it's going to go to looking at the proof of how much Ethereum a validator 
what they're called that validates these transactions, how much do they have at stake? How much Ethereum do they have held up and at stake to be able to validate those potential uh, transactions? So don't want to get too much into the weeds, but the most important thing is that proof of stake is supposedly supposed to make the blockchain faster. Currently, Ethereum can only support up to 30 or so transactions per second. And this proof of stake move will eventually enable it to have upwards of $100,000, I mean, 100,000 transactions per second. So that improves scalability and it will enable more applications to continue to leverage the Ethereum blockchain. And also making this move is opposed to make it much more energy efficient, upwards of 99% more energy efficient. And we can all be happy about that. So we'll be curious to see what happens by the time this video is posted. The merge would have probably already happened, but we definitely will be keeping track and looking to see how well this merge goes. And also we'll be checking to see what happens in the cryptocurrency markets, particularly with Ethereum as the merge completes. Let's go to the NFT space quickly. The NFT rankings over the last seven days, I usually do over 24 hours, but we'll do seven days today. Board Ape Yacht Club, as usual, towards the top of the collection ranks. Other Deed also up there as well. So Rare, we've talked about in the past. Ethereum Name Service, we've also talked about. NFL All Day continues to churn transactions. Once again, that's on the Flow blockchain. CryptoPunks also is in the top 10. And we're getting ready to talk about Doodles, which as you can see, the transactions and the amount of money that has come in over the last seven days has jumped over 200%. And let's see why. So Doodles, their NFT sales surge 12x after their big raise values the project at over $700 million. So several months ago, Pharrell Williams who a lot of us know from NERD and just being a super producer to all the major artists has signed on to Doodles to work with the team. And it'll be interesting to see what they plan on doing with this PFP project. And as you can see here, these are pictures of Doodles and it looks like, you know, they could potentially make a cartoon. There's a lot of different things that they can do with this IP, but they recently closed a fundraise from leading with Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian. And we talked about him and his 776 Venture Capital Fund. And they announced a 54 million fundraising round. And this is going to help them as they continue to grow the NFT project. And as you can see, doodles have been in demand from the announcement, particularly over the last 24 hours, where it recorded over a 12x, which is also known as a 1200% sales surge. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens as they continue to move forward and what they will do with this $54 million. As you can see, over the past year, they have collected over $528 million worth of secondary sales. And it's just been approximately a year since Doodles came out. So NFTs are definitely a way to make revenue. And because Every sale, they get royalties. That's something that's churning constantly, daily, monthly, yearly. So they do have a model to be able to continue to build capital throughout time. So I'll be curious to see what else the Doodles team will be coming up with now that they have raised that 50 plus million dollars. The other major news of the week in the NFT space, Starbucks, which most of us know is the most popular coffee making company in the world, they are now going to create a Web3 experience for its Starbucks Rewards members. So it's going to be called Starbucks Odyssey. And as one of the first companies to integrate NFTs with an industry-leading loyalty program at scale, Starbucks will create an accessible Web3 community that will enable new ways to engage with members and partners, also employees. So basically what's going to happen is they're going to launch what they call the Odyssey app. And so really at the end of the day, the great thing about blockchain is that just like with the internet, we don't know what's going on in the background. We just know that when we turn on our computers, we you know get onto the website and we're able to move and navigate through different websites. We don't know necessarily the technicality of how all that happens on the TCIP protocol. 
So with blockchain, it's going to be the same thing. We don't have to know what's necessarily going on on the blockchain. We just know that we have NFTs. We just know that we have rewards. And so we're able to, you know, hopefully do it at a scale, a faster scale on the same, with the same transaction speeds as just being able to swipe your credit card. We'll be able to do that when we're buying and selling and trading NFTs amongst one another. So Starbucks is one of the first major companies to put on a full on launch where they're going to be creating Starbucks rewards using NFTs. So as you can see here, once you're logged in, members can engage in Starbucks Odyssey Journeys, which is a series of activities such as playing interactive games or taking on fun challenges to deepen their knowledge of coffee and Starbucks. Members will be rewarded for completing journeys with a digital collectible journey stamp, which is basically an NFT. They're not even going to really call it NFTs. They're going to call it journey stamps. So members can also purchase limited edition stamps. So you can get some free by, you know, being a rewards member and playing those games, or you can also purchase within the built-in marketplace and limited edition stamps will be available for members to purchase directly with a credit card. So you don't have to worry about trying to get a wallet like MetaMask and transferring, you know, cryptocurrency from your Coinbase exchange wallet to, you know, another third-party wallet. So it's going to be easy being able to use your credit card. And that's going to make the experience a fun and easy way for members to access this new technology and claim an ownership stake in their loyalty to Starbucks. So the cool thing about the NFTs, particularly these limited edition NFT stamps, is that once you own it, you'll be able to buy and trade it as you so choose. So if over time, if it's a really cool looking, you know, piece of artwork that, you know, an artist that has partnered with Starbucks has done and it raises in value because maybe that artist's name has raised in value over time and their artwork, I should say, has raised in value over time, then that NFT that you now own forever on the blockchain can be traded for potentially a higher price down the line. So that's the really cool thing about NFTs. And hopefully, I'm not sure what's going on in the back end, but hopefully some of these artists will be able to get potential royalties from these limited edition stamps that are sold on the Odyssey marketplace. So a lot of really interesting things are happening in the cryptocurrency and NFT space this past week. So we hope you were able, we were able to catch you up on some of the things that are going on. We will continue to keep you updated. In the meantime, take care. We look forward to linking up with you on the network chain. Till the next time. Bye-bye.